believe that above a lot of God. Yeah. We lay our and you. Softly. Oh, glorious God. Oh, glorious God. We pray we lay we worship you tonight Oh glorious God say oh we praise your name be seated. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 35 down to 37. He says, Therefore do not cast away your confidence which has great reward. Go on. For you have need of endurance. In other words, side by side with your faith, you need a co-laborer that is called endurance. He said, for you have need of endurance, so that after you have done the will of God, you may receive the promise. He said, for he that will come, next verse, he yet a little while, and he who is coming will come and not tarry. So in case you've been here and you've been waiting on God for a particular thing, waiting on God to enter into another season, Waiting on God to live where you are to where he wants you to be. And you probably have waited long. Believing again and again that God will do what he has said. But it seems to tarry. This message is for you. He says you have need of patience. You have need of endurance. After that you have done the will of God. And when I was reading this scripture I asked myself what is the will of God truly. Because the Bible says that when your patience keeps you through a season of process. And in that season... It is expected that there is a will of God you will accomplish. He said, and after that you have done the will of God, then you will receive the promise. So see, process, every season of process or wilderness experience that you go through, there is a will of God that must be accomplished. You don't just jump out of that season to the next one because you are tired of suffering or because you are, you are tired of the things happening around you and you desperately need a change. The Bible says there is yet a will of God that must be accomplished. And I can tell you the truth. The will of God there is simply that you keep holding on till he shows up for you. After that you have done the will of God, you keep waiting on him. But they that wait on the Lord shall renew. So when it finally comes true for you, the first thing he does is he renews your strength. He revives your faith. Because your faith is the connection, the contact point between you and the I am. He that will come, will come. So it doesn't matter what you're going through. Don't get so overwhelmed by the situations around you. Don't get so sucked up in your need and forget that the reason why you came for this service is because your season of tiring has come to an end. You know the story of the, the ten virgins. Five were wise according to scripture and five were foolish. The Bible says they waited all day for the bridegroom and at midnight while they were sleeping the Bible says the bridegroom showed up. They had probably given up waiting. So they slept off. Maybe he will come another day. Not today. This is already midnight. The Bible says at midnight. Sometimes when you have waited long for God to come true for you. Be careful not to miss your season of visitation. Because most times weariness gets a hold of us. When, that, when it is now the season for God to manifest. Most of the times. Here you are seated before me. 
Not knowing that in the next 24 hours God is about to do something in your life That will change and turn around your situation Some of you are just hours away from a miracle job That will blow your mind And blow the mind of everybody around you I'm telling you Some of you are just minutes, hours away from Strange kinds of manifestations How do I know? Because it doesn't even look like anything will happen now That's when God comes through Say why they were sleeping That was when the bridegroom came And thank God that the wise virgins had oil They had staying power You know it reminds me of the scripture I think it's Habakkuk chapter 2 Where it says That the vision is for an appointed time He said though it tarry Wait for it Then he says it shall not tarry How can you say in the same sentence Though it tarries and then he says, he shall not hurry. If he did it yesterday, he will do it again today. That's why thanksgiving is important. Remember? That's the reason why the Bible says, enter into his gates with thanksgiving. It is good before you start the prayers or anything, make sure you start with thanksgiving. It is the strategy to ward off complaint and murmuring. All of a sudden, your eyes open up to see what God has done. See what the Lord has done. Oh, see what the Lord. Now think about all that He has done for you. Think about all that you have received from Him. Think about how He has spared your life. How can you say He is not able to do what He has promised? When he did something for you yesterday. When he did something for you last month. See what the Lord has done. See what. I want you in just one minute to reflect in your mind. Of the faithfulness. The mercies. The grace and the goodness of God. Knowing that if he has done it yesterday. He will do it again today. Has come to pass. See what the Lord has done. Lord has done. Romans chapter 1 verse 16. Let's get to the word quickly. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the word power. Somebody say power. power. The word power there is the word dunamis. It says it is the power of God to salvation. For everyone who believes, take note, take note of the word believes. They say believed in past tense. Believes. He said for the Jew first and also for the Greek. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Why? The end is because it communicates a power that is able to bring a man into the salvation that God offers. He said, for it is the power of God unto salvation. So when this message of the gospel is received and believed by an individual, it brokers an economy of the power of God made available for that individual. And that power made available is capable. It has the potential of translating the entirety of that individual's life. Not only does it forgive your sins, but it brings you out of sickness into health. It brings you out of destruction and guarantees deliverance. It guarantees preservation. It guarantees sanctification. Everything that you need to be free and to live in peace is what it guarantees you. For it is the power of God unto salvation. That means therefore that any Christianity that is professed or practiced denying the end point which is the power of Version or the power dimension of it is not Christianity. So you may not have the car you are believing God for, you may not have the admission you are trusting God for, you may not have the spouse that you have been praying and believing God for, you may not have physical evidences around, around your life that communicates the reality of the power of God, but there's something growing in your spirit. You can sense this inside of you that there's a transformation going on. And it's only a matter of time that what is inside of you called dunamis will become a living expression. For it is the power of God unto salvation. Psalms 103 from verse 2. 
He said, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Then he begins to list the benefits from verse 3. Who forgives all your iniquities? Is that good to hear? But it doesn't end there, it goes on. Who heals all? Somebody say, All. all. Do you notice that there is a similarity between these two statements? Who forgives all your iniquities and heals all your diseases? That means the same power that can forgive you of all your sins is available to heal all your diseases. God will not heal one sickness and leave the other one. No way. More benefits of salvation. Who redeems your life from destruction? Look at this. That's why I like that song. When I am down, I know my soul the weary. When trouble comes and my heart burning me, now I am still waiting in the silence until. So you may be down, but you are not out. You keep waiting on him until he comes through. You raise me up. You raise me up. So I can stand on now. Say. You raise me up. To walk on strong. I am strong. I am strong. When I am on your shoulders, you raise me up to more than I can be. I like the last line of that song. You raise me up to more than I can be. Paul said we are pressed on every side but not crushed. We are persecuted but not abandoned. We are cast down but not out, not destroyed. That's why it is, it is bad when anybody gives up on you. Maybe not for other individuals. But it is, it is risky to give up on a believer. Struck down, he said, but not destroyed. Always bearing in our bodies the dying of Jesus Christ. That the life of Christ may be revealed. He said, who redeems your life? Go back to that scripture. From destruction. There were sicknesses that would have killed you before now. Even you, you knew. Many times you saw dead people while you were on that bed. But how you are alive today and the same organ they said had failed and it is still working is a question only God can answer. Who redeems your life from destruction? The true Daniel into the lion's den. It was as good as dead. Because the Bible says when they later threw his accusers, before they touched the, the floor of the den, the lions had torn them into pieces. Though he was in the den of lions, yet he was not destroyed. That's what the Bible calls redemption. Who redeems your life from destruction. Joseph was in the pit, but he didn't die of thirst. Came into Potiphar's house, they threw him into prison. He was not forgotten there. David was in the wilderness. He was not forgotten there. Roaming the wilderness for 13 years. At a point he even forgot he was anointed. When Saul died, he said, I will Saul die as though he was not anointed. He forgot that Samuel had anointed him. He felt Saul was the only anointed one. But the Bible says in Job chapter 23, I believe in verse 10, he said, for he knows the way that I take. Verse 10 or verse 12. He said, after he has tried me, I shall come forth as gold. Who redeems your life from destruction? What did, it, what did God tell Satan when he came to argue his case on Job? He said, touch everything around him but spare his life. Who redeems your life? Some of you have seen accident face to face. How your boss escaped it is, is something that God will answer when we get to heaven. Some of you have come out from a tricycle that tumbled upside down, wrecked. And how you were standing is only God. How about arrows by night and day? How about all kinds of witchcraft manipulation? 
Don't you know that they are where they are now in their coven, surprised that you are not dead by now? Who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies to redeem you from destruction is okay. But you can be redeemed and be poor. You can be redeemed and still have to pay debts. That member of your family was sick. Finally, the person was healed. But remember, you spent your life savings as a family. Now you are in debt. Is God going to leave you like that? The Bible says, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies. You know the meaning of these two, sentence, these two words? Favor. That's what it means. Loving kindness. Kindness that is loving. Let's go on. He said, who satisfies your mouth with good things? So that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Brothers and sisters, what kind of food do you eat that makes you grow younger? In this our world. Your food has not changed though. It's still gari that you eat. And rice. But you are looking better and younger. Than even those who seem to have everything. The Bible says the little that the righteous have is better than the wealth of the wicked. You know why? Because your own is mixed with grace. Oh yes. They say we have six classes of food plus grace, seven. Yes. That's the reason why when we pray for food, they, they call it saying the grace. And you pray, you bless it, you say the grace over it. You add grace to that food. Just the way you add salt to food to taste. And you know what grace is? Somebody once said, grace is God's riches at Christ's expense. Paid for. So it's the same food you are eating, but you are growing younger. It's the same food you are eating, yet you have not taken an injection this year. It's the same environment, mosquito is biting everybody there. But you have not gone to the hospital, you are alive and well. The person who slept under mosquito net is the one sick of malaria. You that don't even have a net on your window. It's open heavens. You are, you are trusting God. Do you know open heavens? So that your youth is renewed. Brothers and sisters, I believe that this scripture best communicates to us the full package of the salvation experience. But I came tonight to challenge you because it is time for us not just to realize that the power of God is perhaps the most important component of the gospel. The ability of God that empowers a man to become like God, to express the life of God, to make you a sign and a wonder. The end point of this gospel message that you have received and believed is that there should be a display, a daily display of something called the power of God unto salvation. So it's not enough for us to just understand and accept it, but it is also enough for us to begin to contend for it. Because the Bible says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. You must contend for the power of God. You must say no to a life that doesn't experience or is void of the power and the grace of God. You must say no to a life. You know, Satan is trying to pre present a false picture to us. How can you be saved and carry the life of God in you? And there are, not, there are no situations or, or circumstances around you that communicate that there is another thing at work inside of you. How come? Even Jesus did not allow them to begin to witness the gospel of the kingdom. He said, but you shall receive power. That is the end. That was why he stayed with them three and a half years. Even when he resurrected, he came back and was teaching them for 40 days. He was preparing them for an economy of the kingdom that they will receive on account of the Holy Spirit's coming. It is called power. It is like that is what seals up your Christian experience. Do you know that even when we are done on this earth, what we call the rapture experience, when the Bible says that corruptible will put on incorruptible, that means those who have died will be resurrected in a new body. And this mortality will put on immortality. Those of us alive, we will be clothed with our immortal body. The kind of body that Jesus had when he resurrected. Do you know that it will happen by power? 
The Bible says in Philippians 3 verse 20 to 21, it says, For our citizenship is of heaven, from whence we look to our Savior, who is able to transform our lowly bodies, he said, by the same power with which he subdues all things. Is that what verse 21 says? By the same power. According to the working. The word working there is the word energia. It is the highest form for power in Greek language. It means that not only are you overwhelmed with power, but you now become a reservoir of power. It is you, you are giving it on a daily basis. Remember that the Bible calls Jesus the life-giving spirit. And remember that you and I have been born of him. We have been begotten of his kind. So we too are also life-giving spirits. And for every time that God uses you to rot a sign and a wonder, what, you, what happened was that you gave a measure of power out. That word there, walking, is the word energia. It's the highest form for power. So we must, we must convince ourselves that you were safe to live a glorious life. You were safe to experience the fullness. It was supposed to be an adventurous lifestyle. Not this beggarly and weak life that is, that is presented to you by the situation of Nigeria. Not this lie in form of a life that Satan has forced you to believe. No. You were not created to be weak and beggarly. You were created as a vessel of power. You were forged by power. You were made by power. And you must live by power. In one scripture it says of Jesus, it says who lives by the power of God. Romans 1 verse 3 says he was declared to be the son of God with power. Somebody say power. He didn't just say son of God. He said he was declared to be the son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness there is so much that the power of god can do in the life of a man it has a way of bringing transformation that cuts across your spirit soul and bodily dimension it is power that causes changes in the natural if things will change in the physical there must be an introduction of power and the bible says once has he spoken and twice have I heard that power belongs to who? Thank God that it doesn't belong to the enemy. So what makes a, a weak and a beggarly life? When you find a Christian experience that is a toy in the hands of the devil. When you find an individual who professes the name of God. But is still subject to circumstances and situation around. Is because there is a missing element of power. And until you get that power, you can't live as a king and a priest on the earth. Hebrews chapter 2. From verse 1 to 4. He said, Therefore we must give the more earnest heed to the things we have heard, lest we drift away. For if the word spoken through angels proved steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience received a just reward. Go on. How shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? The reason why it was great was because of the power that accompanied it. He said, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed to us by those who heard him. Go to verse 4. He said, God also bearing witness to this same salvation, this same gospel. He said, God bearing witness with what? signs and what wonders and what various miracles it doesn't end there and what and gifts of the holy spirit evidences tangible proof of the power of god the bible says in signs and wonders in various miracles there must be a proof that what you are practicing what you are living is called christianity i will say it again and again christianity is not a religion as far as i'm concerned it is a revelation it is an experience and a lifestyle what did i say it is a revelation it is an experience and a lifestyle one time they they, they, they said of the apostles in one of the cities they went to preach they said these men who have turned the world upside down have come here catch them before they turn this place upside down too why because there was living witness of the power of god 
Imagine a world where blind eyes are opened in our meetings, in our crusades. Deaf here. Where the cripple walk. That person who is crippled in your neighborhood, for God knows how long you pack in there. And one day you go to that person to visit the person like Peter. He says, silver and gold I have none, but such as I have. And instantly the person begins to walk. You don't need to preach any gospel again. In fact, even if your prayer is disturbing them in that neighborhood, nobody will talk. Because it's he that has the power that has rule. Some of the things we pray and labor for, when you walk in a full revelation of the power of God, those things will no longer be prayer requests. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. He was so engrossed with power, so consumed, intoxicated with it, that he went about engaging in philanthropic activities the bible says he went about doing good it's not like now that we are preparing for a crusade or a conference you will do advertisement do everything print billboard and everything and people will not come no <laughs> that one jesus can walk to a marketplace look for a man whose hand is withered and say stretch out your hand and the man stretches out his hand crusade has started the bible says in fact one time in luke chapter 6 when he had prayed all night, he came down and the crowd were gathered around him. The Bible says they came to hear him and to be healed of their diseases. And they were healed. He said, but then they sought to touch him for power flowed from him. It was obvious. And that is the reason why when Jesus was leaving, he told the disciples, if you go out without power, they will stone you. Because they saw when I was alive and they saw what I could do. It is a man, a believer that contends to walk in the power of God that can validate that Jesus is alive. You were not there when he resurrected. Till today, Jews still believe the story that was spread. That the disciples stole his body and claimed he resurrected. So the only way we can prove that he resurrected from the tomb is not by seeing an empty tomb. You can carve an empty tomb and put it there. The only way to validate that he resurrected from death was when there is a demonstration of power. You don't know what it means to rise from the dead. Have you seen a dead body before? Even a dead fly. Have you seen a dead fly? Go online. Maybe if you are lucky, you can see it on YouTube. Harare Miracle Crusade by God's servant, the late Archbishop Bensi. Hi. See, eh? There will be no explanation as Nigerians. We will not have any explanation to God. If we continue like this till Jesus comes, go online. You can search it. You will be lucky if you see the, vi the video. He went for a crusade in Zimbabwe, Harare, fire conference, miracle conference, or fire conference. That's what they call it. They brought a woman who was dead. She was so dead that the flies on her mouth were dead. And as soon as the man of God began to declare, all of a sudden, the flies on the woman stood up and started going around. So the resurrection caught the flies first. Then the woman stood up alive. What kind of message do you preach again? Is Jesus alive? Yes. Prove it. Your generation will ask you one day. Dodge it now, but you will enter a system in, in form of a, a, a job, a career, and a day will come. Maybe you will be in the bank and somebody is counting money in the ballroom and the person just slumps. So you will join them and look for medical personnel. Or that you will go there and hold the hand of that lady and say, Talita Kumi. Let them know that all that is, def your definition is not just standing behind the counter. You see, we think that walking in the power of God is only exclusive to believers. That's the reason why it's only exclusive to pastors. To ministers that's the reason why believers don't mind living carnal lives and entering into society but let me tell you the truth is in society we need the power of god more those of you in the business sector in the banking sector do you know the the the, the, the fortress of darkness that is in that place you go for a political campaign and while you are there declaring your manifesto the person who is speaking just falls down and begins to bleed in his mouth. And you want them to vote your party. 
Next thing, newspaper will carry it. That you people are ritualists. Until somebody in that campaign say, no, I may be a politician, but I have an economy called power. Yes, eh? We can salvage the situation and return back to the speech. Go online and look for that conference. Harare Fire Conference. Mighty things that God did there. I don't know. Kai. I will ask the Lord Jesus one of these days. I want, I want Archbishop Benzie Dowser to appear to me. I want to ask him some questions. What did you know as a man? Listen, you came tonight. Not only will you see God move in your life. In the short time that we have. But you are going to live here with a deposit of God's power. Amen. It's time to go back and challenge those demonic forces around your family. It is time to challenge those witchcraft attacks around you. It is time to pursue the oppressor. Like somebody will say, you pursue the pursuer. And you oppress the oppressor. The, the Bible not say in Isaiah chapter 9 in verse 5. It says you have broken the staff of the oppressor. As in the day of Midian. All of those dreams you have and you are oppressed. It is time for you to go back and sleep. And in the dream, you are the one fighting. Recently, I had a dream. <laughs> I finished praying. I went to sleep. And I had a dream and I was beating some people. And I was afraid. I said, well, why am I this wicked in a dream? <laughs> it's not wickedness. Though. Some people need that. Go to my last scripture and then we'll pray. Psalm 66 verse 3. We've played too much with the devil. We've toyed too much with him. We've allowed certain situations to mock our God for too long. It's time for us to arise. He say, arise, shine, for your light has come. You arise. Psalm 66, verse 3. He says, say to God, how awesome are your works. King James say, how terrible are your works. Through the greatness of your power, your enemies shall submit themselves to you. So how do you conquer the enemy? One word. Say it again. That's all. I believe in authority. But authority cannot manifest until power has cleared the scene. Through the, through the greatness of your power. Therefore God has highly exalted him and given him a name that is above every other name. That at the name Jesus, every knee shall bow. Sickness shall bow. Poverty shall... Even poverty responds to power. Let me tell you the truth. Eh? I believe in buying and selling. I believe in the transactional side of wealth. But do you know that the power of God can bring you into an economy of wealth that natural laws cannot explain? The widow went to Elisha, said they are coming to take my children as, 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 as debtors. He said, what do you have? Oil. He said, that's enough. Go and borrow vessels. Every time there was famine in those, those days, they just went to the prophet. They didn't go to the minister of agriculture or the minister of the economy. They didn't have a meeting with the economic council or distribute palliatives. No. There was famine in Israel. A prophet stood up and said, by this time tomorrow. There is a dimension of God's power that can come on your life. And you will enter into a dimension of wealth that the witches and wizards in your hometown don't understand. You break into, you know, sometimes there's something they call sleeping on duty. We're about to pray now. There's something they call sleeping on duty. So maybe the witches were sleeping on duty. And then you, you broke into an economy of the power of God. And instantly the finances around you begin to respond to it. There is wealth by prophecy. Oh. There is the power dimension of wealth. For he giveth the power to get wealth. There's something that can happen to you by God. And it will veto every natural law. I'm telling you the truth. I'm not encouraging laziness. But brother, I'm telling you that there is a power side to wealth. Dreams have been short-lived. Delay can be because of poverty. Well, let me tell you something. Some of you can have business ideas worth 500,000. Do you know? You may have waited for three years to start that business. With 500,000, there's no need for you to wait again. 
And that's the reason why we must walk in the power of God. Because in the days ahead, the church will become the solution to the world. And if you are here tonight, it is because God wants to do something in your life. When you leave this place, you'll become a vessel of the power of God. Can you hold the hands of your neighbor and just pray for one minute? Lord, let something break open in my life tonight. I'm tired of an ordinary life. I'm tired of facing the same cycles of problems again and again. I'm tired of being mocked. My salvation experience does not look like what I've seen in scripture. Oh, that thou wouldest bless me, Jabez said. He said in Psalms, through the greatness of your power, through the greatness of your power, shall your enemies submit themselves. There's a dimension of grace and power that your world is waiting to see. There is something inside of you that needs to be provoked. There is something inside of you that needs to break forth. Just pray in the spirit for one minute. Something will be activated in your life tonight. Something will be stirred up in your life tonight. There's going to be a revolution tonight. Not only will you see miracles, but God is bringing you to that place where you yourself will become a sign and a wonder to your world. Just preach your name upon me, bring. Just preach your name upon me, breathe. Your name is your name, breathe, Lord. Just preach your name upon me. Some of you need to cry and say, Lord, what I want tonight is a dose, a dose of your power. I'm tired of living an ordinary life. Make me a channel, a vessel. A contact point. Nations are waiting for you. Your world is waiting for you. You were created as the solution to the crisis around you. Oh, but that you will arise tonight and that Christ will give you light. That Christ will give you light. Sepere ke toboro ko soboro ko tobara le para so paria kata empres ke pere ke toba siaba e paro ko sapara gada there must be a change something new must begin to happen in my life that's why i came sele bara kata bale gedeya Please be upstanding. We are going to pray. Can we pray for five minutes? How many of you have experienced situations in your life where it's like you are going through a stubborn cycle of pain, of reproach, of lack? The more you are trying to go, come out of it, is the more you seem to slip in. How many of you have experienced that before? I want to show you one of the ways to be able to break free from those cycles. One of the ways to come out of a wilderness season. There's something that you must learn to do. There was three and a half years of drought. No rain or dew in Israel. Is that true? And then after the slaughtering of the 450 prophets of Baal and the fire that fell from heaven. God told Elijah. He said I will send rain. Elijah told Ahab, he said, get thee up hands and eat. For I hear in my ears the sound of the abundance of rain. But the Bible says, Elijah went and cast his head between his thighs. There is something called traveling. 
to break free from that stubborn cycle. You know why I use the word stubborn? Because you have done everything that you should do. It seems not to end. There is a dimension of prayer that we call travail. To break forth and come out from it. And that was what Elijah did. Seven times he prayed. Until there was a cloud like the size of a man's hand. But you know the reason why we don't get to do it. Is because when you are getting to the end. Near the end of your wilderness experience. You become frustrated. Discouraged. Depressed. There is no strength to pray again. Meanwhile, as soon as Zion traveled, that is the time where you muster every other strength you have. And I told them at the video we had for the workers, I told them that when there is no longer a strength to pray, let responsibility force you to pray. When there is no longer physical strength, you draw from the might that is inside of your spirit. Because it is in traveling you break forth. If you can travel for the next five minutes this night, some of you, eh? What has kept you from January to June? Everything together will break open in July. The Bible says it daily loaded us with benefit. But for six days now, you have to borrow. Don't you know that there is a traveling you can do in prayer that will force compliance? It has been written. But for it to manifest, there is a travail that you must engage in prayer. Angels don't just move because they want to move. The Bible says they hearken to the voice of his word. The voice of his word is the cry in the place of prayer of the children of God as they keep praying for the promises of God. If you can travel this night, something will open for your family. Amen. Psalm 71 verse 21, we are going to pray two prayers and we are done. And I will minister tonight. The fire of God is in this place. Psalm 71 verse 21. I want you to read it. It's on the screen at the count of three. One, two, three. You shall increase my greatness. You shall what? Increase my greatness. You have celebrated where you are for too long. It's time to increase. He say, and comfort me on every side. If not, you will be in trouble. Because every blessing introduces you to a new level of warfare. But when he comforts you on every side, you will be like Solomon who said in 1 Kings chapter 5. He says, so God has given me rest on every side. So there is neither adversity nor trouble. Is a realm. Are you ready to pray? I want you to hold this scripture and I want you to cry your heart out as if the heavens will literally tear over you right now. Lord, Lord, increase my greatness. Comfort me on every side. Raise your voice and pray. Come on, come on, come on. Lift your voice. 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 Thou shall increase my greatness. Somebody is praying. Thou shall increase my greatness and comfort me on every side. It's time to ascend to a higher dimension of grace, a higher level of the anointing. It's time to begin to command results on a superior level. It's time to begin to do ministry on a higher level with a higher command of power. Thou shall increase my greatness. Somebody is praying. Somebody is praying. Somebody cry to Jehovah. Oh God, increase my greatness. Comfort me on every side. Comfort me on every side. Somebody cry to Jehovah. The God that answers by fire must answer you tonight. 
Rabala de Beloroko Bososo, E Bosabata, E Parusia, E Prasoto Toba, E Prasabarata Kaya, Thou shalt increase my greatness and comfort me on every side. Somebody pray. Somebody pray. Somebody pray. Somebody pray. Oh God, increase me in my career, in my academics. It's time to go from grade C to grade A. In my relationships, in my spiritual life, no more weakness. Increase me in grace. The Bible says grace and peace be multiplied unto you. In Jesus' name we pray.